should you buy? Good morning, YouTube! Blah. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. The saga for my perfect marathon training shoe continues. It's going okay. Uh, right now, we're on the stability track, which leads us to my topic for today's video. If you remember last week, I did a first run impressions of the New Balance Bongo V5. It had been working pretty well for me. However, I did experience some pain on my 14 mile run last week. So I decided to go into the vault and kind of pick from another stability shoe that I've used in the past. And I went for the Hoka Arahi 5. And because I've been switching these up a bit, I thought it would be a good idea to put them head to head and talk about which you should buy. If you're in the stability shoe market, but you're not looking for a really, really beefed up intense stability shoe, both of these are really good options and they do differ slightly. So we'll talk all about that today from the uppers the midsoles and the outsoles. And then at the end, I'll tell you which I would buy. Let's not waste too much time. Let's get into the running footage so we can talk about these two pretty looking shoes. What do you say? Now, just some housekeeping stuff before we get started. If you're looking for intricate details of each of these shoes, then I would suggest going to the first run impressions videos for each of those shoes. I will link them here one after the other. Uh, that way you can get a little bit more of a detailed explanation. I, I'm gonna go into some detail, but it won't be quite as detailed as those two separate videos are. The goal of these Which Should You Buy videos is not to uh, persuade you to buy one of these shoes. It's so that you can get your wheels turning on what you prefer in an upper, a midsole, an outsole, all that sort of stuff, what works for you, and then you can determine which you should buy. I'm by no means an expert. I'm just a person who really, really loves shoes. And one last thing. Both of these shoes were sent to me for the purpose of review. However, I am not being told what to say. No one is going to screen what I'm saying. No one's going to see this before you. And all of my opinions, as always, are my own. <sighs> Let's get on with it, shall we? The Hoka Arahi 5 is 7.8 ounces for a women's size 8, but for my size 7.5 women's, this shoe came in at 9.3 ounces. The New Balance Vanco V5 is 7.8 ounces for a women's size 8, but for my size 7.5 women's, this shoe came in at 9.7 ounces. The Arahi 5 has a 5 millimeter drop, and the New Balance Vanco V5 has a 7 to 8 millimeter drop. And for me, both the Hoka Arahi 5 and the New Balance Bongo V5 are true to size. First up, the uppers. Hmm, makes sense. In the Arahi 5, Hoka is using an engineered lightweight mesh. It is extremely breathable and feels pretty thin on foot. They did manage to get some overlays in the midfoot and a pretty structured heel counter. Now in the New Balance Vongo V5, we have what appears to be a hypo knit material in the forefoot. It's very stretchy. And as we get closer to the back of the shoe in the midfoot, we do get a bit of a more structured material uh, with some overlays and then in the back a structured heel counter as well. Now, if breathability is your game, both of these do a pretty good job, but I am going to give the lead to the Arahi 5. This uh, material that they're using is pretty perforated both in the forefoot and in the midfoot. Both in the winter and in the summer, I was getting some sweat marks on the sides of the midfoot, both on the medial and lateral sides of the midfoot. Uh, I did notice it, like I said, in the winter and the other day, yesterday, I think, I noticed it again. So uh, 
Whether you call that a negative or a positive, I don't know, but it just goes to show you that it is a pretty thin material that we're working with. Now in the Vongo V5, you absolutely are gonna get some breathability in the forefoot. That high bonnet material is nice and ventilated, uh, but it is a little bit more difficult through the midfoot and obviously heading towards the back of the shoe to really feel that air passing through. Um, it's definitely not a deal breaker by any means, but just something that I do wanna make you aware of if that is important to you. As far as fit goes on the two of these shoes, they do differ a bit. I feel like I have a little bit more room in the upper of the Arahi 5. Uh, it does feel like perhaps it would be slightly more accommodating in the midfoot area for other uh, runners but who might have a more wide foot. I have a narrow foot, so it does feel a little bit, not big, but uh, just a tad roomier, I suppose. Now in the Vongo, whoa, okay. Uh, in the Vungo V5, we do have a pretty wide forefoot, as you can see, but we do get a bit more narrow in the midfoot. Um, so for people who have a wider foot, this might become a slight issue for you. For me, however, though, with my narrow foot, I do kind of tend to prefer the way that this kind of hugs my foot onto the platform. It feels nice and snug and comfortable, uh, whereas this doesn't feel like it fits as good as well. I don't know. Couple other small things to note, uh, both the laces on these shoes are, they're kind of similar, flat, stretchy, they both stayed tied. Uh, in the Arahi 5, you're gonna get a gusseted tongue. In the Vongo V5, you're not. However, I had no issues with this having uh, a standard tongue without a gusset, so do with that what you will. It's really super close in terms of upper here, which I would personally prefer. I guess I'm gonna go with the Vongo just because I feel like it fits my foot shape a little bit better. Although I do love the breathability here, but uh, this just feels like it's a little more tailored to my foot. So we're gonna go Vongo V5 here, but really you got two uppers that are pretty darn good. Now for the middle of the video, the midsole. In the Arahi 5, Hoka is using their EVA compound that they use in many of their shoes. It is fairly soft in the forefoot. The foam is paired with a J-frame technology, which basically is a uh, more firm piece of EVA material that starts on the lateral side of the heel and wraps around to the medial side of the midfoot. And Hoka also does incorporate a meta rocker technology into the Arahi 5, so you can feel like you're getting a little extra help on your toe off and getting into your next stride. In the Vongo V5, New Balance is using their Fresh Foam X material, and this is paired with their Gradient Stability technology, which is on the medial side of the heel slash arch area, and that is just to help give you a more stable ride. I'm also not sure if I've confirmed this, but I do feel somewhat of a rocker technology in this Vongo V5. I definitely feel a nice roll forward getting into my next stride. So it's great that both of these shoes do have that. However, I feel like it is much more prominent in the Vongo V5. In the Arahi 5 and in a lot of Hoka's lately, I've realized that I'm feeling that rocker technology less and less and less. Now, talking about stability, both of these shoes I would consider to be pretty lightweight stability options, not a ton of plastic and crazy systems to kind of get your foot going the right, air quotes, way. So in the Arahi 5, I'm feeling like the center and the forefoot is pretty soft. You're gonna get a similar-ish feel to a Hoka Clifton, although it is gonna be a little bit firmer than that. But I guess if I had to compare the feel to a neutral shoe of theirs, I guess I would compare it to a Clifton. I love that the Arahi 5 covers a lot of surface area, so you're also gonna feel pretty stable on the platform just from that alone. And something I like a lot about the J-Frame technology is that it wraps around pretty much the majority of the perimeter of the shoe. So it feels very even and balanced and you're not feeling like you're getting like stability in one place and not the other. It just feels like a well-rounded system. Now in the Vongo V5, you are gonna feel a soft forefoot as well, for sure. That's probably the softest part of this shoe. And that nice rocker technology makes it feel kind of like a 1080 V10 or V11. Not quite, not quite as soft as that. Towards the back of the shoe, it is much firmer in that heel area. And that's something that I 
think I might need because of my plantar fasciitis issues. And here too in the Arahi 5, it is gonna be a little bit firmer in that heel area. But when it comes to the stability element of the Vongo V5, I am on the fence a little bit. So I really like how it's just in one place in the shoe and everywhere else is totally normal and it's basically just like a neutral shoe. You just have this gradient stability patch right here. Uh, and in theory, that is terrific because I don't really want something intrusive. But on my longer run, like I said earlier, I did experience some pain in my other arch on my right foot, which is not usually my problem foot. Usually my problem foot is the left foot. I guess the really true test for me will be when I take this out for 10 miles on Sunday when you're watching this video and see if it gives me arch pain again. I'll try to add uh, a pinned comment uh, down below so you can see how it went. Maybe my decision will change then, but right now we're leaning towards the bongo. This was a really hard choice also because I do really like certain aspects of both shoes. And it's not that I don't like the Arahi, I do like it a lot. And if it's not gonna give me arch pain like the Vongo V5 did, then maybe it's the winner. But uh, I don't know. Right now I'm gonna say that I really do like the way the ride of the Vongo V5 is more. All right, we're almost out of this video. So now let's talk about the outsoles. The outsole of the Arahi 5 is pretty similar to their neutral shoes like the Clifton. Uh, we have some blown rubber on the forefoot of the shoe dipping into that lateral side of the midfoot and it kind of wraps around the uh, heel area there as well. On the Vongo V5, we have a lot more rubber here, pretty much covering the entire outsole of the shoe with some flex grooves to help it just give your foot the ability to flex the way it needs to. I'll tell you straight up here, I'm probably gonna prefer the Arahi 5 a little bit. I know that that exposed EVA that we have uh, might be uh, an issue in terms of durability. It hasn't been so far, uh, but I just think this is a lot of rubber. It doesn't get in the way of the ride of the shoe, but maybe if we had a little bit less, we could cut down on some weight. I haven't had a problem in either of these shoes and they've both taken all different types of terrain like concrete, uh, gravel, grass, dirt, sand, all that kind of stuff. And they've both been fine. And I do think they're both gonna give you a lot of mileage, but I kind of like this setup a little bit more than this. The Arahi 5 is $129.95 on runningwarehouse.com and the Vongo V5 is $149.95 on runningwarehouse.com. Which leads me to the conclusion of which should you buy? Now, if you're looking to save money, then I would say hands down, go with the Arahi 5 because you're still gonna get a really good stability shoe and one that you might even prefer over the Vongo depending on what your preferences are. But if you want something that has a more prominent rocker technology, maybe something that feels slightly more like a neutral shoe, kinda, uh, then I would go with the Vongo V5 and just spend the extra $20. Like what's another 20 then, you know? As for me in this moment, I think that I would go for the Vongo V5. Like I've been saying this whole video, it just feels a little bit better for my foot. Although I do really like the Arahi 5 and think if this is what you're leaning towards and you're making a good decision, both of these you really can't go wrong with. And again, once I do my 10 mile run on Sunday while you're watching this video, I will uh, update you all with how it went if I did experience some arch pain because if I did, then I kind of can't wear this anymore. And the saga will continue, but for now I'm going with the Vongo V5. And so that concludes this video of which should you buy, the Hoka Arahi 5 or the New Balance Vongo V5. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe when you're done with all that. Hit that notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. This was truly a tricky one. I have to say, I had a hard time picking. I have some more videos for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Hello. See you next time. Now, just some housekeeping stuff before we get started. Now, just to go, now, just now, before we get started on, now, before we really get started, now, before we really get started, now, just some housekeeping stuff before we really get started.